Okay, this is James with Thermal Battery Systems, and uh, this video is going to be just basically discussing some various control components. I'm going to be going over some of these things and uh, talking about how we're using them and uh, the shift that we've recently made from uh, the controls that would be over here to the network controls. Um, this is a fairly sophisticated uh, solar controller that can do um, multiple tanks and multiple sources. Uh, it's a Resol BXL uh, and uh, here's basically some of the uh, configurations that it is able to uh, to control. Um, it was not able to control the all of the functions that we needed on our uh, multi-source systems but it, it had been things like that that we'd been using in the past to handle as many of the functions as we could and then using other things like uh, this is a Ranko two-stage set point controller um, there's another Tecmar set point controller or I'm sorry a, a differential temperature controller um, you got a, a Honeywell 8000 thermostat here I have a video on how those are how all the menu items can be configured in that and the uh, the you know, and then just uh, some some basic relays. Um, and, and the reason we had to put all these things together in the past is that there would be things that we would need to accomplish and it wasn't all able to be done with one controller, so we would have to assemble what I call a hodgepodge of various components together. In addition, none of these components would be able to have been seen remotely. The resole uh, controller here does have a um, uh, an SD card that can provide you some information if you're able to uh, uh, get to the site and remove that it'll have some data logging capability. Here's an example of kind of where we've moved on to. This is an easy system control uh, and it is a supervisory network control. I've got it put on a board here as just an example to show some of the uh, variable things it can do. These are two of the components that are on the network. This is on the Modbus network. So we've got a, a barracks relay device here and then a, an I.O. device. And this will do, um, let's see, what is it? Uh, Ten inputs along with, uh, I think it's, what is it? Eight digital outputs and then four analog outputs. And I have it all wired to where you would basically just bring power in on a set of terminals. These, the rest of these just go to that barracks and are switched to uh, turn on or off pumps. Um, these are smaller just uh, digital outputs. These are the analog outputs so we can do 0 to 10 volt signal over here. And then this is all the, uh, the there's only 8 of the 10 total uh, inputs here and I've got a um, just a little a little photo cell wired into one of them. So I can wire all kinds of things into that, but I'll, I'll get into that in a minute. But the difference is, is that while these have the, the various configurations that you can set up and you can configure these things to do, uh, that's all it can do, and all of the stuff that it can do is all present and on board, and it could be misconfigured, and there's a lot of complexity to going through and getting, uh, you know, getting all these menu items um, selected correctly, and it, a lot of complexity and difficulty on the front end. This, on the other hand, doesn't have any complexity on the front end. It doesn't have any interface on the front end. Uh, everything is done and configured on the back end. And by that I mean it's configured on software that we write onto it. So I can make it do whatever I want it to do. Um, so this is just an example of one of the systems that's up. This is the, the system that's in Laramie. And you can configure these dashboards a number of different ways. and. Uh, you know, put whatever gauges you want on them. We've got a picture of this home site there and all that. But then you can go over here to this configure tab. And it's on this page where you can do all sorts of various things with your, the, you know, here's your outputs. And you can, you can click on each output and you get to map those or add outputs and uh, add inputs. And you get to build the whole control exactly how you want it, um, you know, with software. In this case the the one in Laramie is running a script and so that script is uh, gonna come up here there you go. So what we do is create stuff like that for complicated or 
complex control integrated systems uh, and so really all a person has to do is define what needs to be done uh, you know have a mechanical schematic define how many inputs they are what kind of inputs they are how many outputs are they what kind of outputs are they and why they need to be uh, doing what they need to do if you can communicate that to us we can make it happen with a blank slate control platform uh, like this um, so a little bit more about this control again it's a supervisory network control now on board with this you've got the ability to to take four inputs on board and close two relays and then so that's all this thing can do by itself but since you can plug into modbus and microlan network you can you know you can build out the componentry the peripherals however you need to so Let's just talk about some of those things. Um, this is a CT sensor. We use these to uh, clamp that around the uh, power wire of whatever circuit you're trying to measure. And uh, it'll tell you the current and log when it's running. And uh, it's, for us, it's mostly useful to put that on a heat pump. And then we can tell when it's running, for how many minutes it's ran in the past month, or however we wanted to know, and uh, whether or not it ran in first stage or second stage, because the current will be different and it's easy to be seen. Um, there again is that I.O. device, the same as the, the one that's on the back here. Um, and so again, that, that just gives us the ability to bring on a lot of inputs of various types and uh, control eight digital outputs or ten. And they're, th this one will only do two amp digital outputs, whereas the barracks will do uh, ten amp, I believe it is. So we can run pumps off of this one, whereas if we were to use something like this, we would have to use it in conjunction with something like this, which would have the smaller relays turning on bigger relays, which would uh, which could then drive pumps. Um, there's one of the easy controls. So we can do 40 inputs and 40 outputs on this box. Uh, so however many different things, like this would be a device, and a temperature sensor would be a device, so however many of those we would add up, we'd have to have 40 of them uh, to be to have reached the limit of one of these easy controls. Uh, this is a RH and temp sensor, so again that would be a device, and so would if we used up an input on with just like that little photo cell right there. Uh, we could um, that would also use up an input. Now, just to show how some of this stuff hooks up, if you're on the micro LAN network, that's a micro LAN uh, relay out. It's a four out device, and this is just a temperature sensor plugged into it. Um, but the reason I did it that way is I just wanted to show if you're plugged into the micro LAN network, you can plug temperature sensors or you know, relay out devices or those RHs into this thing and uh, theoretically it's able to communicate across the network uh, without issue. Um, and if it is having issues or for whatever reason you would want to use this Modbus uh, network protocol, you could do that also. So this is another example of one. This is a DG box. I don't have anything hooked to this right now, and I haven't actually been able to, I haven't had the time to hook up any peripherals, so any other I.O. devices or anything else onto this. Now, this can control and communicate with a Modbus uh, network, so theoretically I could use this device and the barracks with it, but I've not yet tried that. I don't actually know that to be true. Uh, but this has about 25 or I'm not, I'm not sure you could look it up. Um, it ha it can communicate with a whole range of uh, n of protocols beyond the you know the easy control can do two Modbus and Microlan. The DG box can use a lot more than that, including N Ocean. Um, but the main reason we got it is because it it, it also contains some really interesting graphics design. Uh, software on it and we can make some really good looking dashboards and um, we're having fun with playing with some of that stuff so uh, and then lastly here's a this is a Jackson thermostat uh, just a communicating thermostat that um, is uh, similar to any other programmable stat other than we can hook it up and it, it can it can communicate on the Modbus network 
So in summary, the difference between the old style of controls of doing things is I would have to find a component that would do what I needed it to do and I would deploy it in that role and then that, it would be like a standalone piece that wouldn't be aware of other components that would be in the system and I would have to kind of have a plan for how that was all integrated and working and as I said, I, I would call it a bit of a hodgepodge. With, with network communicating controls, I can decide how I want to control the system from a holistic standpoint and then I can deploy the right network controls the the you know the the electronics pieces into the system I can communicate with all of it at the same time it does not need to be online to be running uh, so if it loses internet connectivity it's still going to drive the script it's going to run whatever we've told it to do internally on that local area network and, uh, but then we are able to communicate up online and then bring it up on dashboards that, uh, you know, either look like the, the one we were just looking at before, or uh, in the future we're going to have some of our own custom dashboards that are going to uh, look a little bit different. And um, I don't know if I can show any other gauges or anything on here. Yeah, I've got like just a regular. But you can, you can basically do whatever you want with the data as soon as you get it online. So... Just wanted to do an overview on uh, some of the stuff we're working on. This is James with Thermal Battery Systems. Thanks for watching.